Hi everyone, I'm Scott Lewis from KnowTheCosmos.com and here with Fraser Kane and we are doing a Hangout on Air on how to do a Hangout on Air. Hey so, Scott. How you doing Fraser? Having fun over there? Uh, good, yeah, right. So I mean we, we've done now what? Each of us together have done like a hundred plus, you know, individually Hangouts. We have trained hundreds if not thousands of people together on how to do these Hangouts. Right. Uh, you know, we've seen every single sort of technical snafu that goes up and we see the same things again and again. All and the time. All yes. the time, yeah. And so, you know, we thought it would be great to sort of just provide a hangout to teach people how to be the best guest in a hangout and then hopefully that lots of people will know what to, what they're doing in future. Well, it's something we get a lot of questions for too, both offline. I mean, I know that you've given uh, you're going to talk at SIO. We had many questions while we were at South by Southwest. Where we're out there with our live broadcast by the, the the large telescopes out there. So we figured this would be a good way on helping get everyone up to speed and a little bit easier so you can watch it as we're doing it. So I'm doing a screen recording of us live while we're also. You'll be able to watch this as we're going yeah. live now. As we're getting a couple of viewers without this, uh, without being announced on anything. <laughs> yeah, going on. exactly. Yeah, what's <laughs> going? On? What, what is this thing? Uh, right. And so we, we, you and I brainstormed on every single yeah. sort of tip and trick and technique that we've learned on how to be a good guest. And hopefully, we'll just run through all of those, and people will sort of finish this hangout after having watched it, and we'll have a much, much better idea of, of what, you know, how to set up their environment, how to set up their technology, and, and even just sort of how to behave during the hangout to be the best possible guest. So. Right. And the, I, to me, I know mean, we typically start with the beginning with our virtual star party and how to get your camera to work, because there's many different types of cameras out there. Yeah. And the better your camera you have, the yeah. better quality you have. So I've got an HD webcam set up on mine. I've got a uh, Microsoft LifeCam Studio. I know you've got a Logitech, right? Yeah, I've got a Logitech 910C. And I think this is the point. Don't use the 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 camera that's on your laptop. Even right. the MacBook Airs and the MacBook Pros, they're not good enough for like a really nice professional camera. You right. want to spend the extra 50 bucks, 70 bucks to get a nice external webcam. Absolutely. And, yeah. And the Logitech and, and, 910, I don't think they sell it anymore now, the 920, any of that range, they're fantastic cameras. Right. Absolutely. And what I really love about mine is I can actually put mine onto a tripod, so that's what we did when we're live somewhere. We, you can actually screw it onto a tripod and have it set up somewhere. Yep. So you can get a good wide field of view if you need to as well, but if you're also just doing a lot of hangout interviews like this, you just have it completely set up all the yeah. time and getting good quality coming through. All right, so the next thing is is audio quality and you want a good microphone. And again, the microphone that comes on your laptop is terrible. <laughs> it is horrible. It is horrible. It is not like if you're like I'm just going to use the one on my laptop, that is not going to do the hangout any justice. It is going to, you know, uh, and so like a really low quality headset microphone is a step up right. but even that is you know and you want one with the USB connection so you don't you do. want one of the ones that has the little micro jack you want the one with the USB connection that's going to plug in and become an, an extra audio device on your on your computer right what do you use what are you using right now well right okay so so I the next step above that is to actually use a more professional microphone right. and I use something that's called a blue snowball and I actually have a microphone arm that's right in front of my very nice front of my computer and you can't quite see it but the blue snowball is great and it, it costs, it's like you're a podcaster or something I, yeah well yeah exactly <laughs> but it costs about a hundred dollars but it's set up and ready to go and so I just come in the, the camera set up in front of my computer my my good microphone is set up in front of the computer. They're both ready to go. They're both configured, and and away we go. And so, if you're going to do, you know, any, you know, if you want to be available for a lot of interviews, you want a nice microphone. So, spend the money, spend the twenty five dollars to get a headset microphone. Although you just look like you're in Mission Control, right? Right. I mean, I've got mine. I've got a a wireless which used uh, with Bluetooth and um, the wireless USB that you can use. And these are great if I'm outdoors and don't want to be tethered to anything with my headphones. Yeah. But when you're looking at better quality, I mean, I've got my, my Zoom right here, which allows me to do recordings, but also is picking up really good audio quality yeah. inside the Hangout, too. Yeah, yeah Zoom's great. 
Uh, I've got one too, and I use that for more remote stuff. But but absolutely, the uh, you know in my case, the Blue Snowball is great. Headset yeah. microphone is good. But like I said, the problem is you've got all this sort of thrilling headgear. So right, you know, um, Major Tom. This yeah, is exactly. You know, mission Control, <laughs> which works for us in the space world. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So the next thing I think is is headphones and headphones. Yeah, and if you've got that headset, then by all means, you've already got headphones built in. But if you don't, then get a pair of headphones in. You'll see we we're, we all do it. Right. I've got earbuds in. You've got your thrilling headgear, right? From the well, you know, from that, my grade eight uh, audio visual lab. That's true. Well, I, that I just don't really like earbuds too much. They bug me. So I like having canned uh, headphones. But the biggest point is, if you're using your speakers, it, there's just so many opportunities for something to go wrong with your audio. Whether you're getting feedback, whether it just sounds tinny and you can't hear anyone, so you're always just leaning towards and people are wondering why you're staring deeply yeah. into the camera. Well, well, the biggest thing that we're trying to avoid as hosts of these Hangouts is echo. Yes. Echo is the enemy, and it all depends on how good your computer is. And so if you're getting audio that's coming out of your speakers and going back into your microphone, you're getting this echo, and it is... It is. It will ruin a hangout. And, and we will you get, mute you so quick. Yeah, we will mute you so fast. <laughs> and so the way you stop that, the way you prevent that, is just you know put on some some yeah. some earphones, and then the, all of the echo problems go away, and you're one less problem in right. in the hangout. You will raise the the technical quality of that hangout a huge notch because oh, there is nothing worse than the echo because everyone in the hangout hears it and then people are trying to talk and then they're hearing their voice echoing out from the other people and it's distracting yeah. and and it's yeah it, and so we mute. We just like, you know, mute yeah. mute mute. We we used to be like, "Oh, I'm kind of sorry." We're not sorry anymore. We just sorry anymore. Yeah, just we're mute. just yeah. mute. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. And, you know, we we talk talked about it as well as having a reasonably fast computer, but you, as far as anything else, your internet, if you can have an, a hardwired ethernet connection, it, it's going to rock over anything Wi-Fi. We, have, we all love being able to walk around wherever we want to go. However, if you're having a good interview, you do want to have a good, hard internet connection going Yeah. On. Because yeah. latency, latency yeah. is not fine when it comes to doing a hangout because you're using a lot of bandwidth. Yeah, absolutely. So fast computer and a nice hard wire to the internet, if you can. Um, right. So let's talk about the software stuff that you're going to need. Uh, Chrome. Chrome, right. So Chrome. the browser, right. So the browser, you know, right. Hangouts work in Firefox. They work in Chrome. They work in Safari. Right. But you want to use Chrome. Right. Well, it's, if you think about it, it makes sense. It's a yeah, Google totally. product. It, you know, Hangouts are a Google app. So if you want to use it in the most native environment done by Google, you're going to want to use it in Chrome. And I, you know, we have used them in the different ways, but I've just found the most, you know, you'll get errors every once in a while because nothing's perfect. But by and large, the most consistently well-run Hangouts have been done using Chrome. Yeah. And so if you're going to be in a Hangout and you know this is going to happen, and maybe this is the first time that you're going to be in one, then you're going to want to install the Google Talk plugin. And the best way to do that is to just go set up your Google Plus account and then start a Hangout, and it's going to tell you that you're going to need to install the Google, pl the, the Google Talk plugin, go through that process, and if you can get to the point where you're just hanging out with yourself, then you can see yourself on the screen, then the Google Talk is working and you've, right. you've fulfilled that requirement. It's, and it's really easy to go. It's just google.com slash talk, and it will pull up not only the app if you want to chat with people, but there's the plugin. You'll see it's the Video Talk plugin, and yeah. it's really easy to install. It goes for Windows, Mac, and Linux, so you don't have to worry about that at all. And it yeah. installs in 10 seconds. So. Yeah. Uh, so you're going to want to shut down any other resource application on your entire computer. Right. You know, if it's not the Hangout or some kind of reference tool that you're going to need for the Hangout, shut it all down. Right. And and sometimes, you know, I do use other hardware or excuse me, other software that's running, but I also have a pretty beefy computer that I know is going to be able to run it. So but that's a very rare scenario where you would ever need to do that in a Hangout. If you're just here for an interview, if you're talking, you don't want anything else running that could be slowing down your computer. It could be having anything pop up in the middle of the Hangout and you don't know what's going on. You just want to have as little going on in the background as possible. Yeah, and it's super important that you shut down every single 
intrusive notification system that yes. that especially could be p making pinging noises or what have you. You know, yeah. you can imagine chat things coming up and and just distracting you while you're in the middle of a of your part of the conversation. Or worse, you're sharing your browser and then some chat notification pops right. open and everybody sees it. So shut that all shut that stuff all down. Right. It, and and especially if you are going to be doing screen sharing, do yourself a favor and get out of any email because just even if you don't have anything sensitive up, it's just not cool looking at having people look into your email inbox. And it's something that's really easy to forget to do because I know I always have my email inbox open yep. all the time. But when you're going live and if you're going to be prone to doing screen shares and things like that, you don't want other people looking into your email inbox just because, yep. really, do you want someone going through your mail? Yeah. I yeah, shut it all down. Right. All right, so let's talk about your environment. Like, 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 how can you set it up so that when you're on camera, it kind of looks the best that it possibly can? So, um, uh, you know, with, with me, I say, you know, your camera is going to be the first step. You know, we've already talked about what type of camera, but you don't want to be, you know, having people looking up your nose. And you don't want to set it over to the side where you have some weird MySpace camera angle. You, you want to have something where it's above your eyes looking at you so they can get a feel of who you are instead yeah. of some obscure angle where they're distracted by the angle, not... Yeah, and like the typical position of a laptop is going to be down low right. and then the camera is going to be looking up at you. It's really going to be looking up your nose, <laughs> so, you know, and so you want it, you know, uh, you want right. to get that camera up high that you're looking down at it. And so, you know, for you, the, right now, the camera is a lot higher than you. For me, the camera is pretty much eye level for me. And so I'm right. able to kind of look, look straight into the camera. If it was even better, I'd probably even raise it a little more. So, right. so get that camera up. And if you've got that external camera, you really can do that. You can mount it on a tripod. You can move it up. You can get it to a point where it's kind of framing you but in, and kind of looking a bit down at you. Uh, and the, the reason you just mentioned that mine's a little bit higher is because I have these pretty space posters behind me. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. have my nerd swag over yeah. here as well. So it's yep. something that adds to the Hangout. Nothing distracting, but something where the audience gets a feel for who you are, you know, what, what you're embodying, what you're actually talking about. Yep. And yep. so you can see the Voyager spacecraft behind me as I'm talking about space, and that's yep. always fun. Yeah, absolutely. And I can uh, see your pretty Robin... Maybe. Yeah, yeah, I know. I don't have a very interesting background, so so <laughs> I will I will admit that I haven't done a, a lot of work on that department yet. I'll get you uh, some space posters. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um. So you need to minimize your backlighting. Yes. And right now I've got some side lighting, so it's not too bad. So I'm being illuminated from the side. But I'll see if this. Let me try and do an experiment here. Hope this doesn't make you too sick. Let's see. I'm gonna. There you go. You can see. So now you can see the light, and I've even done this. Let's see this. There. Let's not do that. How's that? No, I'm going to no. take the camera off of you now. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, exactly. Y you can't see it. You know, you, yeah. you have this massive amount of lighting yeah. coming from behind. So you look like a silhouette. You look like a ghost even. Yeah. No one can see any of your facial features, any of your gestures going on. People are wanting to talk with you and have yeah. a conversation with you. They can't even tell that you're looking at them because you're being just blinded yeah. out from anything behind. There's no yeah, and, and so you want to, to find a, uh, you know, a position in your house or in your office or whatever that you're just a, a, across from the light. So the light is shining at you or to the side of you is, mm -hmm. is perfectly fine as well. You just can't have that bright object behind you. you know, right. Many cameras just can't handle it at all, and, and you're dark while the outside is bright, and it just doesn't work. So Right, and, you know, and you're never going to be in the perfect environment, especially nope. you know, we, I've, I've done Hangouts live in person in places that you're never in the best environment, but you can bring things with you. Very inexpensive. I know you've got a little lighting source. I've got yeah, a couple yeah. lights so that I, I use every once in a while. Yeah, so I, I shore up the lighting on, I've got a, a desktop lamp that I have, and so you can kind of see here, I've just got this, this desktop lamp that I, that I set up, and I just have that shining at my face to just add a little more light to me specifically. And, you know, I've done hangouts where I didn't have that light, and it was just, I was super dark right. in, the, in the scene. So um, it's just a way, you know, and, and again, it's like a $35 desk light, and you probably have one kicking around your, your office right now. So Right, absolutely. You know, I've got my, just my ceiling lamp over here behind my monitors, and it's, I have a soft... Uh, 
uh, a soft bulb in there. So I'm, it's not blaring against my pale skin, blinding all of you. Yeah. But it's something that, you know, I, I've got two desk lamps if I ever need more lighting, especially if I'm going to be outside, if I'm going to have a bunch of people around. Having a decent lighting source, it doesn't need to be a spotlight. It needs to just be something where the camera's going to be able to pick you up. Yeah. Okay, so then the next thing to talk about is background, and and I will admit I have not put a lot of work into improving <laughs> my background. So so you know my background is my office, which is downstairs in the basement of my house, and I've got this weird robin egg blue wall behind me, and and I really am meaning to like put a bunch of cool space posters there, right. but but the but a lot of people they feel like what they need is to be like right up against a flat wall. No, and just don't. like you know, no, like you look okay. like you're in prison. You yeah. look like you're in prison. If that's yeah, exactly. The case. You don't want to have like a a dirty kitchen behind you, right. but it's totally fine to have your living room and your you know have your house and just have something kind of interesting. A lot of people try to put like a big bookshelf behind them. Right. Right. And that well, works. But I think but, one of my favorite. Uh, interviews I've ever done was with they had a whiteboard behind them so they were able to display what they were doing so they they had a tool with them as so yeah it's bland but you're seeing that hey now I have something to actually add to my setting yeah and, and just having something something neat and cool around with you it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be anything fancy or crazy yeah. you don't have to get a bunch of NASA posters like I've got just something that looks nice as opposed to something really bland if I took these posters off I would hate myself yeah, to hang out because yeah. it's just a white wall against my white skin, and you would be, be too far away from the pretty space picture. So, <laughs> right. Uh, right. So, and get rid of all the external noises. Your phones are going to ring. the 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 doorbell is going to go. The you know the kids are going to interrupt you. So just you know everything. Every external you know, interruption that you can manage, get it dealt with beforehand. And one of my pet peeves is, as much as I love using Mac OS, I can't tell you how many times I hear the Mac mail message go off in a Hangout all the time, which is a combination of yeah. a noise issue and someone doesn't have headphones on. And so you're just like, hmm. Yeah. It just, it's distracting. Yeah. And yeah. it's something, if you, it's really simple to fix and you don't have to worry about being distracted yourself or distracting other people inside the Hangout. Yeah. Yeah, totally. All right, so we've got a bunch of things before the Hangout. So right. if you know you're going to be in a Hangout and you've got some, some some homework beforehand to make getting into the Hangout and getting ready to go as smooth as possible. And uh, w one of the big ones here is is making sure that, that you and the host have each other circled. Right. Because there's a lot of times when you're going to need to invite the person or send the person a message to say, I can't get in or whatever, right. and that all works smoother if you have each other in circles. And so when you start to type in their name, it pops it open and, you know, and, and suggests the right person as opposed right. to you getting a big list of people to try to find the right person. And, and having a specific Hangout circle, I like having one specific for Hangouts. That means I have them enabled in my chat settings that I know if I need to send them a message if they didn't get the Hangout link, I'll be able to send that to them in, in Google Chat, but also having their, their email available as well. So that way you guys are circled, you have each other, you have a way of contacting one another in case something goes wrong or yeah. in case something's going right. You, you want to be able to have a means of communicating with the host or the other guests if you're in a multiple person hangout. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you, yeah, you're going to want to make sure that the host has your mail so you, you, can, you have another kind of method for communicating back and forth. Right. Um, so, you know, because one of the sort of secret tricks here is that if you just take the URL of the Hangout right. and you email it to the other person, that's a one-click right into the Hangout. You can pretty much give that to anybody. So, right. so if, you, if, you're, if the invitation system isn't working, and it often isn't. It hasn't worked. I haven't received a yeah. Hangout invite from you in at least seven months. <laughs> there you go. And I am inviting you all the time. This, all is, the not, time. this right. is not personal. Right, you know, and so we we just know that we I have to pull up your your profile on Google Plus just to make sure because I know I'm going to see it here, and but there's also other ways that we get in contact. You know, yep. we're on Skype and stuff like yep. that. But having alternate ways of getting a hold of the person that you're going to hang out with is crucial. Yeah, uh, make sure you haven't blocked anyone in the hangout. Yes. And this, yeah, and this is copy. But now, if you you know this is your first time us using Google Plus then chances are you haven't done this, but if you've been in a bunch of Hangouts before, maybe you've blocked somebody, and right. that's a problem. 
It is because you will not be able to join. Or if you've blocked someone and they're trying to join, they won't be able to join. And so it, yeah. it's just, it's not a fun time. You know, if, if you're going to be doing something public and you know that someone that you've blocked is in there, even temporarily, just unblock them, even yeah. if, you know, if you don't want to deal with it later on. But it's it's an issue and it's going to cause more problems for other people that you're in this hangout with. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you're going to want to set some kind of, of alternative method of communicating with the host right. and maybe even some of the other guests. A way that you can say to the host, I can't get into the hangout, what's going on? Or, you know, you know, to be able to facilitate you get in. Because the, all the host has to do is grab that URL from the hangout and mm -hmm. email it to you. And right. you click that link in your email and you're in the hangout. So if you haven't got that, those other methods of communication going on, you're going to start to scramble and wonder how you're going to make your way into the hangout when it's actually happening. Right, absolutely. So often, I know with you and I a lot, with the weekly space hangout or with the virtual star parties, we have images we want to share. And it's really easy to not have them where you want them to be. And so if you're, if you're going to be a guest and you have a bunch of images or a few of them, have them in hand and have them in a, a folder. So I, I just had a hangout last week. And I'm just going to screen share this real quick. That I put them all into one folder. And so I could go and see which ones I wanted to pick. I numbered them too, so I knew which order I wanted to have them in. Yeah. And that way we're able to go through and and share them. And you know which one you left off on. So they're all in one location. You can pop them up and you can screen share from there. Or you can use a custom overlay as well. But the, the biggest point is having yourself organized beforehand because you don't want to be, oh, I think I have a picture around here and you're having to fill in some time trying to find it. Just coming a little bit prepared and having them set aside in the single folder is going to save you so much time and it's going to keep you from being kind of awkward. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we mentioned this before, but you're really going to want to declutter your browser. You're going to want to make sure that that you don't have a lot of extra task bars and uh, bookmark bars and and buttons and things like that. And these right. both are sort of, you know, they're just providing a little more information than maybe you want to share, but also they they create more real estate so that we could just focus on the the images or the web pages or the or the you know the text that you're trying to share. Right. And you know, because you get all these different extensions on, on Chrome that are easy to fill that up or your bookmark bar, things like that. And it, you know, it's not necessarily anything embarrassing that you might be sharing, but yeah. it does take away from what the Hangout's able to share because it's actually pretty low quality as far as the video goes. So it's 360p. And the more pixels you take up with stuff that you're not trying to share, the lower quality is going to come with the end product that no one's going to be able to see. Yeah, I mean, sometimes a, a really good way to do this is open up an incognito window mm -hmm. in Chrome. And that way, it's already going to be stripped down. It's not going to have any of your plugins. Right. Nothing unexpected is going to happen in that browser. And then you can use that to show off images and, and text and, and whatever you need to do and feel a lot more comfortable and make sure it's, it's not going to crash. It's not going to be slow. It's, it's, you know, it's a good way to do it. Right, absolutely. Yeah. And it's easy. Incognito is really just one click. Go ahead yeah. and pop it open yeah. and you don't have to worry about anything like that. And so, you know, if you're going to be involved in some kind of hangout beforehand and, and you're, you're wanting to get as much viewership as you can as one of the participants, help promote it. Yeah. You're, you know? you're a part of it. And, you know, it's, it's not just someone's show that you're on. You, you, should, you shouldn't be just expecting to have this great feedback. You are intimately involved in this broadcast. So do yourself and do the host a big favor and put it out on Twitter, on Google+, on Facebook, on your blog, anything like that. And make sure people know where you're going to be because people will be able to see you, share that out, but also be able to be doing your, your host a favor as well by getting them some more viewers. Yeah, absolutely. So the more of that you can you can help out with, the, it's really appreciated and helps get more viewership and helps make the whole thing more of a success. Right. Um, and so I think it's, it's really important as well that you've gone back and forth and you're very clear with the hosts about what your role is going to be in the Hangout. What, you know, are you providing a short commentary and then you're leaving again? Are you going to be there for the whole time? what topics are going to be your responsibility. The more you've got that figured out ahead of time, right. the more smooth the whole hangout is going to go. And so you may want to rehearse a bit with the host or with the other guests if, it, if it's really critical. Right. I mean, there's so many different types of hangouts that I've seen that we've, we've hosted ourselves, but also that, you know, I like watching hangouts too. And you can have a panel show, you can have a one-on-one -on -one interview, 
or something like when we had the Curiosity landing at JPL, we had to keep cycling people in and out. We only had a certain amount of time for each guest to be there. Yeah. And so you only have 10 slots. And it was a very full show, so we had to keep yeah. cycling people out to make sure the next guest can come in. And, and sure. we didn't have as many tools at our disposal to no, bring didn't. them in and also then to sort of help them leave again. Right. So we had to be very polite about, about asking them <laughs> if it's time to go. Right. Um, and so I think the last thing is is that you're going to want to set up your lower third. And we're both using a lower third right now. Yeah. Uh, and this is the default one. And this is used in a, a plug-in called Hangout Toolbox. And, you know, we can turn this lower third on and off and on and off. Yeah. But I think also, you know, you might want to get a custom. If, you know, if, if the Hangout is trying to boost the quality of it and, and they've got a a custom lower third, you're going to want to make sure you've got a copy of that, you've right. installed it, and you're ready to present it. So, And it's sure really easy to do. You'll, you'll see it on the left-hand side. I'm actually doing, like I said, I'm sh uh, saving the screen recording. You just click on Hangout Toolbox. It'll ask you for your permission to install. It will take you maybe three seconds. And then you'll see not only the lower third, but many other different apps to use. If you don't know what they're used for, Please don't play with them on air. Yes, <laughs> please, yes, please don't yes. play with them on air. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get to a, get to that in a second because right. Yeah. Um. Because oh yeah, that's that's very annoying. All right. So 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 now let's let's assume that the hangout has begun, uh, and now you're one of the participants in the hangout. So what should they now know how to, need to know how to do? You should be able to know how to mute your microphone because. I hear a helicopter coming over my head right now. I can, I'm, luckily I have a, a decent microphone that's going to cut all that out. But if you don't, you're going to have things going on. And if you're not speaking, know how to mute your mic. And it's yeah. up on the top right-hand side. Um, you'll actually see your audio level just to the left of it. So you know exactly where your microphone is. And I'm just going to speak right now and click it. And here I'm back. Exactly. So it's yeah. Great. And so, I mean, a lot of the times during the Hangouts, I'll leave my microphone muted. I mean, I've got kids, and the kids will sometimes, you know, stomp around upstairs, or right. they'll come and ask me a question. And if I just leave the, the mute on most of the time, unless I'm about to speak, then it, then it saves the rest of the Hangout from having to hear all those background noises going on in, right. my, in my house. Because that's going to happen. Uh, yeah. there's, a, there's a guy fixing this car right outside my condo. A helicopter just went over, you know, because I, unfortunately I live by where there's a lot of forest fires, so there's always helicopters going by. So having that set up to where just in case something happens, if you're not planning to speak, just have it turned off, you know, yeah. and you, it's one click away to yeah. unmuting yourself. The trick, though, is you've got to remember to unmute yourself. And so, again, we see a lot of this where someone is, Fraser, Fraser, you're <laughs> muted. Yeah, Fraser, oh, right, right, right. Fraser, you're muted. Yeah, yeah. and you've got to remember to <laughs> unmute yourself. And so right. just, just you know, the more you do this, the more practice you get, you'll remember to mute and unmute, you know, it becomes second nature, and it, it doesn't And luckily, it, it does show bright red where your microphone button is that you are muted. Yeah. It, it's not subtle. It does show what's there. And just taking a quick glance up every time that you're about to speak is easy. Yeah. And so, oh, okay, I need to unmute myself. But it's one thing to, to remember, though, if you show up to the Hangout, you know, as one of, like, the fifth person, I think, or the fourth or fifth person, you'll be muted automatically. Yeah. And so if you drop in and you're going to want to talk, you got to remember to unmute yourself. Yep, it's true. And it's it's I like it because sometimes people join in late to a Hangout, and that's inevitable. And something could be going on in the background. Someone just crashes your party while you're trying to have a conversation with a guest and all you're rushing around to go mute them because they don't realize they're being loud and obnoxious while someone else is trying to speak. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the next thing I think is, is you're not the only person who's going to be in control of your mute button, the host of the... Yeah, I just muted you right there. Just proving a point there, Fraser. You can unmute yourself, though. Yeah, so that's the point, is, is Scott will, you know, in that case, Scott muted me, but I can unmute myself, and so right. you, can, you, can bring it, you can bring it back. So just, so just remember that when you're getting muted and, and unmuted or somebody else is muting and unmuting you, that you have control over that, too. And it, It's not personal. It it's, really well, is Well, that's personal. the thing, right, is, is I will mute if I hear 
echo or background noise or anything that I think is just interfering with the quality of the Hangout. And, you know, in many cases, that mute is a signal to that participant that, that I heard some kind of background noise and they should have a second to think, what's going on? Why am I causing, oh, right, I don't have my headphones in. Oh, right, right. you know, I really shouldn't be watching television television at the same time that I'm, you know, doing the hangout. And oh, I've got and, Slayer turned on to 11. I should yeah, probably exactly. turn that off. Oh, down. right, right. I should turn that off. So, <laughs> so in many cases that, you know, when you get that mute, when you see that so-and-so has muted you, it's not personal. No. It is just there is audio coming from your stream. And we can see it. There's yes. a little green line that's on the bottom of everybody's window, and we can see it moving up and down. And so if there's if you're the source of the of that background noise, we'll mute you. Sometimes we go overboard. I mean, if, if there's a sound coming and we can't quite localize it, we'll just mute a whole bunch of people just to get rid of it right. and then bring the people back one at a time to try and, and figure it out at the same time that we're doing our show and we don't want anybody to notice that it's even happening. Right. So, But we're also Kung Fu ninjas when it comes to that, but we've been, we've been doing that for yeah, a while. Yeah, we've done a lot of them, right. <laughs> so, so that's all. So I think that's, that's important. Yeah. Um, and so then the other thing to think about is, is the video. You could also mute video. Right. So if, if something happens to you, you know that you might be getting a very important phone call it's not rude for you to blank out your, your video for a bit, mute your audio as well, and take it. That way, you see their icon at the, at the bottom. So right now, you'll just be able to see Fraser's icon. And the show is going to go on. It's nothing distracting. You're not going to see some muted person at the bottom on their cell phone, you know, twirling their hair and pacing back and forth. And it allows the show to go on without any distractions. And when you're done, you can just head on back and like nothing else happened. No one else but, is the wiser. But remember, if you mute your camera, you're not muting your audio. Right. And so, you know, you might mute your camera and go do something and, you know, answer the doorbell and have a conversation with the mailman or whatever. And that audio is still going to make it back into the Hangout. So if you right. do need to step away from the Hangout, make sure that you mute both of them, both the audio and the video. Now, a big change to that, though, is there's going to be times where the host is actually going to be muting your video. So, I, for instance, here, I'm going to be hiding Fraser from the broadcast right now. And so not only does it, you know, mute out his video, but actually removes him from the Hangout that you can see. So right now it's going to just look like I'm in the Hangout. And we'll use it a lot for an intro to any of our Hangouts where we'll just have a splash screen up. And then I'll go ahead and just bring them back in. But a reminder is you're still going to be audio muted until you unmute yourself. Fraser's trying to talk right now and he can't. Because I didn't click to unmute myself. Right. And, and also, if you're, I, I've, again, I think it's like if you're the fifth person or the fourth person, or if you join a Hangout already in progress, you will show up, your video will automatically be muted. So you won't be brought into the Hangout until the host unmutes your video, unhides your video, and, and brings you into the Hangout. And remember, you're going to be muted. You are. And it's really easy to forget. And it's, you're just, it's, it typically happens within the first five minutes of a Hangout when you realize, oh, wait, I haven't done, I haven't prepared myself all the way. I'm kind of frazzled, it's, which is easy to do. Don't worry. We'll make fun of you for it later, but not while we're on air. Yeah. And it's, it's just something that's really easy to get into a, a habit of just checking those every single time you get into it. And yeah. that way you just go on from there. And now the way that we get rid of a guest, the way that we, you know, when a segment is over and the guest needs to go or we need to make space for another person is that we will, we will mute their video. Right. And so we will say, well, that was great. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll see you later. Goodbye. And then we mute, we hide them. Right. And what that does is they, they disappear from the hangout. It looks like they've hung up and left. They're actually still there. Right. And then they can disconnect and, and leave the hangout, and that can make room for another person. And so that's kind of our, that's our signal to our guests to say, okay, thanks a lot, see you later, click. Yeah, because that keeps it from being kind of awkward, like they're just still sitting there. It's time going, to, okay, okay, we, we need you to go now. <laughs> I know. And it, again, it's not personal. It's not we're, personal. We're running a show. Yeah. And we want to have good transitions from one segment to the next. And so we will, just like on a radio show or anything like that, you do need to have a segment change. And we're just going to push you back into the green room 
and then yeah. you can leave at your own leisure. Uh, so you want to understand how to use your lower third. We sort of introduced that earlier on. Lower third. So you know you're turning it on and off, and I, you know with my screen cap here, which I'll throw into the finalized version of this. But you'll see here on the top here where it shows lower third. Mine's turned on, and you can see here when I click it, I'm turning it off, so it's actually disappeared from where I'm at. But when you're there, you see your name is going to be automatically populated. So you don't have to worry about forgetting to turn, you know, put your name on. But you can also edit it. So I'm going to turn mine off, and I'm going to edit this real quick. And so I'm just going to put my middle initial in. And so that's going to be my middle initial. On the second bar, you can put in, I have my website, knowthecosmos.com, and also my Twitter handle. So people watching you, they want to find other ways of getting that. Instead of you having to introduce yourself at the very beginning, it's always going to be up when you're speaking, and that's going to be a great way. And you can change the color if you want. And I'll turn this back on, and now you see it's now Scott D. Lewis, and there's my web page, and there's my Twitter handle. And it's yeah. something that's always on, really easy for the audience to see who you are and... Yeah. You know, a good way of getting hold of you. And as we said before, sometimes you can make a custom uh, lower third so people will actually, you know, make that in advance and you're going to want to get a copy of that image and use that as your lower third. But, yeah. but just to be able to get that, and it's located in the Hangout toolbox, you just want to make sure that you've installed that app uh, well before the t it's time to actually start the Hangout. Otherwise, you're going to be struggling to get it going when you actually do your Hangout. Right, absolutely. And speaking of the, the Hangout toolbox, I know we have it actually a little bit further on our on our uh, outline here, but I'm, I'm showing here there's a bunch of other toys on there, and it's really tempting, especially to play with the meme faces. Oh, don't do it. Oh, get the troll face on. You're totally trolling me right now. Am I? We're, oh, there you go. You mad, bro? Yeah. Mad, bro? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't and play with the toys. It's. I mean, it's, it's really fun because there's shiny buttons and you want to yep. play with them. But it's, if... if there's really no need for it. It's, they're fun if you're having, you know, with, if you're playing with some friends and being silly or whatever. But um, oh, don't you dare! I know what you're gonna do. Mm. You are a pretty princess <laughs> with a monocle. And there's nothing more distracting when you're having very serious conversation about science. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So e e there's nothing that will enrage your host faster than you playing with the toys. Yeah. So just open it, like like get it out of your system. You're gonna find them. Get it out of your system before the hangout starts. But just make sure that you can that you can turn them all back off again uh, in time. You know, do your own hangout and yeah. You know, then use all the toys that that you want. But yeah, no, in in a in a public hangout, yeah, because <laughs> everybody does that, and it is yeah. It, it's it's cute the first time when it came out months ago, but yeah. Typically, if you're on someone's show, they've been doing it for a while and they've seen it. So many times, and it's not yeah. funny anymore. <laughs> so let's 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 add show a few tips for how to do screen sharing because we're screen sharing all the time in our all the time all the time. And as we mentioned, you know, in theory, you're going to have a whole bunch of really great pictures ready to go in a nice folder that you're going to then be able to share. Right. But but what we want to be able to do is, you know, when you screen share, you you probably you want to screen share something. I'll do a screen share here. So Beautiful. I'm sharing uh, the Messier 13, which is quite lovely. Um, and you can see here that I've got it oriented so that the image takes up as much of my window as I can. Now, if I change the, the size of the window, you'll see what happens here. Right. Right? And so the screen sharing, if I go this way, right, it doesn't look very good either. So, so before I screen share, I try to create the size of my image to nicely match the aspect ratio of the window itself. Mm -hmm. And that creates a nice shared image that people can see. And you can play around with it in advance. You can see sort of what makes for a good shared image. Ideally, you want an image that's sort of nice and wide and it's going to sort of go full screen. Right. And like we were saying, you're limited on real estate. So you want to utilize as much of that real estate as you can. Yeah. Um, and another thing as far as with screen sharing, I'm going to go share one as well, is has to do with when we are muting someone's video or audio in the beginning of a Hangout, is that we will have a, an intro tile. And so here's one from my Hangout um, from last week, and it shows your get, the guests that are on the show there with you, the name of it, the date, and things like that. And it's just a, a great way to introduce everyone 
and it's already at the aspect ratio of the Hangout, which is going to be 16 by 9. So if you can have any of the graphics you're going to use at 16 by 9 aspect ratio, it's going to be fantastic. You don't have to worry about resizing anything too much, and you're just sharing out the window from there. Yeah, and so I think it's important. I mean, the screen sharing is great, and, and it's really helpful when the host or and a guest and another guest are talking that you, as another participant in the Hangout, take a second, find a nice relevant image, and screen share it into your window. The host is going to notice that you've, that you've put up this relevant picture, and they're going to click over to it. And it's way easier as a host to click on someone, an image that somebody has shared to, to present that than to, while you're interviewing the guest, at the same time try to be digging up an image and screen share it and present it to people. It's and so to be like sort of be extra ninja helpful, think about what additional information would be really helpful in the hangout at that moment and and just, you know, without being asked or like, oh should I screen share this? I think I know where what just do it. Just, yeah, just find an it. image, share it, put it up in your window, and the host will notice and we'll click on it and make it the active window and the viewers will be able to see it. And it'll seem really smooth, like you're a well-oiled machine. And right. it's really helpful. And, and some shows, I've been on a few shows, where they actually have a producer that actually is off the, the screen. And so if you have images, you can actually give them to the producer by emailing it, putting up on Google yeah. Drive, and let them know, okay, when I'm speaking on this topic, this is the image I want you to use. Like I showed earlier in the Hangout, having them numbered is wonderful. That means they know which order you're going in. It's not just a bunch of arbitrary numbers that you downloaded from Facebook and you have no idea which order they're in because the producer's not going to know either. So yeah. Having and, some order to it helps. Yeah, and and so I mean they have producers, those lucky lucky people, because we are often just you know we're doing all of it all at the same time, and so just to have that additional assistance is is really helpful. Right. And sort of speaking of assistance as well, it's really you know if you're one of the people in the in you know, you've done some help with the marketing beforehand, but once you've actually started the hangout, keep tweeting, keep posting on Google Plus, reshare the original video. If a really interesting post point gets made in the Hangout, tweet that out to your followers, just the way they do at conferences. Like, have you ever been in a conference and really interesting things are just getting are flowing out using hashtags? Right. You know, do that to really sort of help get the word out and build the audience because the audience can build while the show is happening. Right, and, and typically when you're in a Hangout on Air, you, there's a hashtag already designated for the show, and so it's out there ahead of time. People are looking at that on Twitter, and you can search it on Google+, and so if you're sharing out by, tweet, uh, by tweeting or making a quick post on Google+, while you're in the Hangout, people will be able to see the conversation being had in text while they're actually watching you and hearing you live in the Hangout. And it's just yeah. a, another way to add to the conversation that people will be able to see the timeline of things happening as well. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about uh, talking over other people. No, I don't people. want to talk about I mean, What I think we should do is you can see what no, happens when a lot really of people are talking at the when same time. Is it's really hard to I, follow. I just I can't hear so you. you really so want stop okay. talking, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So the point being that when another person is talking, like just wait, give them a chance to finish their sentence, their whatever, and then you're going to want to uh, then you're going to want to sort of talk. Right. And it's, you're going to know with a regular conversation, this is what these are. You're having a conversation with someone. And listen to those cues just like you, you know, unless yeah. you're super awkward like some of us are, which is fine. You can be awkward. Yeah. But wait for a natural end of someone's sentence. If you, if you need to interject, if something is crazy, don't be rude, but you can still chime in on a topic. Just yeah. don't be steamrolling over everybody in the conversation because I know I'll mute you yeah. I'll, with, with <laughs> boom and yeah. we'll wait. Yeah. Now, now the way the the way that we will often do this is that we will use the chat functionality in the system as a way to kind of cue ourselves up in the in the background. And so, you know, on the left hand side of every hangout, there's a bo there's a button that says chat, and if you click on the chat, then you can type. And just and have a conversation with the other people in the hangout, and so you know that's important as a way to be able to have these conversations. You know, if you're like queuing up or good point, or you know, I've got a you know, oh my phone is ringing, I'll be back in a second. You know, stuff that you don't necessarily want the audience to hear, but you want to be able to communicate to the other to the hosts or the other participants. But we'll also use this as a way to say, I want to interject. 
So I've got a point to make. As soon as you're done, can I go next? And then a really skilled host will have this conversation with the one person and then transition right over to the next person to the outside audience. It's going to look like there's some kind of telepathic link going on. But the reality is that you're just, you know, you're just naturally switching from one thing to the next thing because people are, are making it known that they've got something to say. Right. And so if people are watching the recorded version of this as I'm recording the screen. I'm chatting with Fraser right now saying, hey, your, your background's kind of blue. You should do something about that. That, put some space posters up, but also letting him know that I'm sharing this part of it onto the screencast. So we're actually talking on topic, and he's going to get on that. And I don't need to acknowledge it in the Hangout because we're having this conversation there. I muted myself while I was typing that out, and no one else watching it knows that I'm actually typing away, having a comment to make, sharing a link that's relevant to the topic that's on hand. Yeah. And this allows a conversation being had by multiple people, not just one or two people going on. In the olden days, the uh, when you would type, it would be very loud and would, you know, you would hear this loud typing noise coming into the hangout. Now they've gotten to the point where the, the hangouts will actually automatically will automatically mute, but the technology isn't quite perfect. So right. if, you know, just as a just to be safe, and sometimes it takes a few seconds or a second to kick in, so you're type a type of then mute. So if you know you're going to type, click mute because you're already muted because you're worried about these loud sounds, and then just just type, and right. uh, and that way people won't hear it. Because I believe it's under keystroke frequency, and so it has nothing to do with the sound itself. It has yeah. to do with the fact that you are putting input into your keyboard, and it's recognizing that through the Hangout app and will automatically mute you as you're typing, yeah. which I'm thankful for because I can't tell you how many times you have someone just rattling away forgetting that, you know, and sometimes it's easy to, you think you mute yourself and you actually didn't and they start typing, but this is a really nice feature. However, don't rely on it 100%. It's yeah. there in case you forget to mute yourself, but please just mute yourself before you're typing. Now, one of the things that's really important, and again, it's sort of like one additional thing that it would be great if the host could do is to engage with the commenters. So, you know, when we do these live hangouts on air, there are comments that appear in the events page, there's comments that appear on our live stream, in YouTube, sometimes people post comments on Twitter, and all these comments are happening and people are asking questions and they're asking for additional points and whatever. Um, it's great if you as a participant keep an eye on these conversations as well and engage with the public out there while the hangout is happening because we, you know, the host is too distracted and just hasn't noticed all this stuff because they're they're busy flying this airplane of, you know, control <laughs> to keep right. the hangouts going. Uh, if you can, you know, if, if someone asks a question or you've just presented a link, present that, put that link into the comments so that the people who are watching the show can then follow your link to, to whatever, you know, whatever you're referencing. Right, and what we love too, and we're going to actually bring up a little bit as well, but with the comment tracker, I just added our very common hashtag we use for the virtual star party. It's just pound star party, search Twitter, and you'll be able to watch any comments coming in from Twitter live as they're pulling up. So you don't need to have another window open. You can actually be in the Hangout, just be glancing over and watching them go. And so if anyone's bringing up a great question regarding your Hangout, you'll be able to see immediately also, there's ones from YouTube, from event pages, if it gets set up beforehand, any of the shares on Google+, Plus, once those get put in, you're not having to jump through everywhere, and you're able to engage with your audience using your voice. You can actually see these things and speak with them and not have to tweet it immediately, but you can reply to it and then actually go and, and tweet it out later on. But now that your, your audience is able to see that you are recognizing that they're paying attention and you're paying attention to them yeah. and are able to answer a question or thank them for a comment and anything like that. So it's really for, helpful. For example, Kevin Franklin has stumbled onto our live Hangout on Air right now and wants to know how we get those name tags across the bottom of the window and that's the lower third yeah. which um, is a part of the Hangout Toolbox app that you can install in your Hangout. So. So you can have that conversation with the people who are watching your show, and it's it's great. It, it is great, and it's it's really really easy to have. So uh, typically, the hosts will actually assemble those for you, and it's really you know I know I do it every time we have our hangouts where I set it up before we go live, and you can share it out. And so right here with the recorded version, I'll just click Add All, and it pulls up all the sources. And that way, all you have to do is click one button, you'll be able to see everything scrolling down your screen. Yeah. You don't have to worry about that. 
but it's there for your convenience. And if you some people, it, some guests don't want to know that this conversation is happening because it's going to sort of ruin their flow. Other people want to see the conversation and want to be able to engage both inside the Hangout and outside the Hangout with those people. So, so you know, whatever suits your your fancy. Um, but you can have, you as a participant in the Hangout can get, a, can get access to a copy of all of those comments that are happening. And so you can watch the conversation happen while the host is watching watching it and while the people are commenting and, and watching the show. So right. it, it helps you at least pre even prepare. You know that if you see a really interesting question, most likely that host has seen it as well. And it's preparing you to even have a response for it instead of being blindsided by a random comment that you didn't realize someone made 20 minutes ago. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, so then, you know, let's say that you have to enter or leave. Let's say if you have to enter the Hangout late. Right. So uh, fortunately now, if you're like the fourth or fifth person, if you enter the Hangout late, you automatically start out, your camera is, is, is muted. You're actually hidden from the broadcast. Right. And then the host will notice and then click to bring you in at the appropriate time and say, oh, look who's joined us, and then unmute your, and then you've got to remember to unmute your video. Right, or unmute your audio. Unmute your audio. Sorry, yeah, you've got to remember to unmute your audio. The host can't do it. Right, and uh, that's safe. That means if you're having a conversation, no one can listen in on you. So yeah. it's there for your protection on that. But yeah. again, as we went over earlier, if, if you just look like a pantomiming talking head at the bottom, no one really can. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to move, come on, unmute yourself, please. And the Hangout will try to warn you. It'll say, it appears you're muted, you know, bing, and it'll try and remind you to unmute yourself. But uh, now if you need to leave early, you can always just exit the Hangout. There's a little Hangout button in the upper right-hand corner. You can just close the window, and you will leave the Hangout, and, and, and you won't be part of the broadcast anymore. So you don't have to be worried that perhaps it's going to keep recording your room or whatever. And it's something, again, as we talked with the chat, you know, let your host know that something's come up. Yeah. Stuff happens. Life happens. So mm -hmm. let your host know that something, you know, that you've got to leave early, leave earlier than planned, or that you can stick a while longer than you had to. But if you do need to exit, it's really easy. Just one click, you're gone. Um, but we also recommend, too, joining early. So before going live, if you can, I know we typically have about a half hour green room session before we go live. It's the same hangout, so you don't have to worry about jumping in and out, but this allows us to go over with, with you, the guest, any technical issues that are happening, anything that we might need to fix up before we go live, and it gives you a chance to feel comfortable seeing yourself on camera and the fact that people can hear you and maybe we need you to speak more, a little more clearly into the microphone, change the camera angle a little bit or your lighting. But that way, you're there early. You're able to get prepared. It's a really it's really stressful on me as a host if you show up three minutes before yeah. you go on air. Really yeah. stressful. Yeah. But then it's a bad host if you don't set up 15 minutes, you know, half an hour early to make sure. So the host, it's the host's job to make sure that Hangout is available as you know, in a test format first in that right. green room for everyone to get in, get settled, and get ready to go. Um, now, now you're going to have technical problems. I mean, yes. the technical problems have settled down now. Things are way better than they oh, were. Oh man, are they way better? Yeah, they're way better. <laughs> but I mean, even just like starting this one hangout, we we're about you know we're like 15 minutes later than when we wanted to do it because your video was really choppy and you needed to reboot your computer. Right. Yeah, my exposure settings went wonky, and yeah. I, was, I was blown out, and you can see me. So I just reboot my computer, but jumping into that Hangout early allows you to see that you're having an issue with yeah. it. So if you are having technical issues, again, let your host know that's going on. Most likely, the audience isn't going to know unless it's some crazy loud noise. Yeah. And well, and the thing to really remember is that, you know, we as the hosts are in no place to be able to then help you troubleshoot your the problem because right. we're trying to run a show so we're hosting the show and we're interviewing the guests and then at the same we're watching the comments and we're switching the camera and then to also try to help a person get their get themselves technically functioning so so the few things you can just try to do if, if things aren't working just reboot your computer right. like just that's the that is that is probably you know we're not sure what's wrong but if you just reboot your computer and come back into the hangout that will probably fix it Right. And you we're know. not, the show's going to go on. We're yeah. not going to sit there going, oh, I know, oh no, I hope their computer didn't blow up and they died. We know technical issues happen. And Joe, just 
no one's really going to notice too much that you've left unless you're in the middle of a conversation and we'll realize, hey, they're having some technical issues. We're going to move on to the next topic and if they rejoin, we'll be able yeah. to pick that but, up. But don't spend a lot of time trying to troubleshoot it from the high end down. You know, Don't kind of go, wow, maybe if it's the browser, I'll restart this or I'll change that or whatever. Yeah. It could be any number of things interacting on your computer and and I recommend just the first thing to do is just reboot the computer right. then load up Google Plus and try to come back into the hangout and whatever who knows what the problem was but that probably fixed it right gremlins most likely gremlins yeah exactly <laughs> so you know you've reached the end of the hangout and the you know the host says okay well thanks everyone goodbye <laughs> but don't but leave don't leave yeah don't leave. because because the host then has a button they click that says end broadcast and, and it takes will, a few seconds. To yeah, it. yeah. And so they'll, it'll click in broadcast, and then you'll see that it goes from being on air to being off air. And you know, don't do it, Scott, because then this will kill the saying out. But <laughs> but um, but that but then but then you're back in the green room, and then you can say you know you can have a quick session to sort of see how things went. You can thank the host for their help. You can sort of organize the next thing you're going to do. Whatever you need to do to kind of you know debrief. Right, and it's it's a great idea too. Even going into our next topic, there, with you're in the green room now, you're you're able to relax. You're able to finally take that swig of water. Don't do this on air, but I'm going to have one now. <laughs> but you you're able to finally relax and be back to just being yourself. You're not on air anymore. Now you can actually go to those comments. I know I love it when I have a guest of mine go through the comments on the event page yes. and interact with yes. people that you weren't able to you weren't able to answer it. You can't answer every single question that comes on live, but showing that you care enough to respond to the viewers that were interested in what you're having to say is huge and you will make a fan of yourself by yeah. just interacting with people mm -hmm. on the event page. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, we'll often sit, to, you know, at the end of the show, we'll still be in the green room, and then there'll be all these comments, and we'll be discussing them, we'll be answering questions, we'll be just kind of keeping the conversation going until we feel like the people who are watching have kind of got the value out of, out of this. And so, you know, don't leave right away, because there's kind of a lot of jobs still to do, which is to get into those comments, post links to the stories you discussed, give, you know, answer people's questions that maybe didn't get answered during the show, and people will just be so impressed that 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 you've taken the additional time to to continue this conversation and, and answer their questions. I've had one guest back three times because of the fact that we stayed afterwards and we had that conversation with some of the comments. And like, you know what? That'd be a great idea for the next time we we do a hangout together. Is we can focus on this aspect of it or that aspect of it. And what it allows is that you're getting a returning audience. You're going to have those people coming back to see you, yeah. and you are getting more face time. People are, are seeing that you are being more interactive and engaging with the people yeah. on Google Plus and on YouTube and things like that. And so I think the, the last thing that we're going to discuss today, I think, is, is just, you know, once the video is done, once the, you know, the, the hangout gets rendered to YouTube, and now there is a YouTube video, Help promote that YouTube video. Help get the word out that that hangout has happened because anybody who, you know, who gets that video can now watch it as if they were watching it live. And so, you know, we find that 90% of the people that view our, our stuff watch it after the fact. They don't watch it live. They watch it, you know, at a time that's convenient to them. So, again, it's, if you could... true. I have hard research on it. I researched that for my my... Uh, my poster presentation for the virtual star party is at AAS. It was about our viewership and our retention and how we're able to get people interacting with us. And the majority of the views come 24 hours after the live event. So you're able to spread that out. You're able to get more people to see you, see the hosts, and get uh, get subscribers as well because you can actually add it to your channel if you have a YouTube account you can link to it as well so people are seeing that you've been involved in something and it really really helps spread that 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 connection you're able to work together and find different ways of building that community while also promoting each other by two clicks it's really mm -hmm. easy to do that and so as soon as this hangout is over Scott I will go and I will share it in my stream to my 700,000-ish followers and uh, circlers, and and then that will help uh, promote that we did this. So, yeah, And then I will exactly. go through, and not everybody does this, but we're going to do some post-editing on this video to help make it run a little bit smoother. But if you are on a show that does that, 
most likely they're going to let you know that there's going to be a post-edited version of that video and they will email you the link or they'll share it and ping you on Google Plus or on Twitter and things like that. And they'll give you the opportunity to share that video out as well. Yeah. And so you can help them promote the uh, the video after the fact. So, whew. Are yeah. we done? Are I we... think the only thing else I would really add is besides answering questions or comments is provide relevant links to any information you have, whether it be your website, if you're trying to promote yourself, that's the best way. Where can people find you and give them a hyperlink that they can click on in the event page or in any of the yeah. comments? But if you've referenced an article, if you've referenced anything else where people can go and find out for themselves, that's the best way of doing it. Give them something clickable that they can go and find a, a way to find more information about things that you were talking about. Good. Well, I hope this is a this has been a handy hangout. This is something that that people can can sort of share with new participants in their in their hangouts on air to sort of help them go through all the steps and make sure they're going to be comfortable and set up technically, <clears throat> and be able to participate in the hangout and make your hangouts a lot more smoother and professional and uh, you know and and more polished. Yeah, I, it's we're we're almost a year and a half in doing our hangouts. Yep. It's it's kind of crazy, but it's it's something that we're really happy to be able to share with all of you because it's it's been a bumpy ride. We've had a lot of trial by fire, and there's so many great ideas and great hangouts out there that we'd love to be able to help you be the best guest and also help facilitate having really good guests on, top, on your shows. Fantastic. All right. Well, thanks, Scott. Thank you, Fraser. Have a good one. You're going to click end broadcast now, but I we'll stick around. Right now. I'll stick we'll around, talk. and we'll talk. Okay.